all of you who are going to be joining us. Um, we're doing a live unboxing today. And um, for this, I've got my lovely wife, Melissa. <laughs> did you use Vanna White yourself? I Vanna White did myself. I don't think Vanna White ever Vanna White did the... <laughs> and here we have Vanna White, and she's like all... Ta-da! <laughs> That's what you just did. She missed out. That she did miss great, her opportunity. Great, I mean, maybe it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have my um, my beautiful wife, Melissa, with me, and we are going to go through a box of antiques. Um, a couple weeks ago, a gentleman came through the store and he brought me in all sorts of really interesting uh, uh, swords and Persian daggers and things like that. And he said he had some other stuff at his house. And when somebody has things like that that's been in their family for many uh, generations, you should go have a look and see what there is. I bought us a box of stuff from him. We're going to go through that with you guys today on camera. So without uh, further ado, I guess... Oh, well, we should wait a, a minute at least. <clears throat> well, we'll wait a minute for people, yeah, for people watching the video later, they're going to be like, just get to open the box already. But sometimes, like, when you watch it afterwards, it'll start, like, a couple minutes in. Oh, yeah, that's weird. I wonder why it does that. Oh, well, so. that's, a, that's a question for for future us. <laughs> um, I We will, after I go through this box of stuff, we'll stay on for a couple minutes and answer some questions, do some chat. Melissa's going to be off camera, and you, if you guys have questions or yeah. if you're making comments. I, that's why I'm looking down. I'm yeah. not just ignoring you all. She's going to relay that to me because <laughs> I'm going to be focused on just going through the box and uh, commenting. So, um, so to start with, hello, 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 hello to everyone coming Hello in. to everybody. <laughs> and this is the moment where I take the uh, phone off the tripod. And you might say to yourself, hey, Alex, why don't you use the tripod for going through the box? I can't maneuver and work around with the tripod there. It's a little difficult. So for the, I know you guys, it drives you crazy, but um, you're going to be seeing... you also get the comments where people don't like the tripod. Yeah, so. people don't like going to the tripod. <laughs> and you can't make everybody happy. Anyway, here we go. Bum, 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 bum. All righty. Oh, you might want to put your paper. Oh, oh it's just my map to okay. read my story. <laughs> so I'm going to come back to this one because I do know what this one is. And I want to show you guys that one after. I feel like I just dunked that ratty cloth into my water glass. Oh, man. I'm going to move my water. I'm going to catch 10 of 12 historic diseases. How'd you catch smallpox, Alex? Well, funny story. Uh, this is kind of cool. Feel, feel the weight of that. Oh, light. <laughs> but you know it's what it is? It's actually a polar bear? Yeah, it's a polar bear, but it's a hood ornament off of a big industrial truck that was made in British Columbia. That's actually kind of amazing. So that's a off of a Canadian-made vehicle. Um, it's really dusty. Look at that. It's don't, really dirty. Don't bite your nails. But hood ornaments are very popular. Um, people collect them, put them on their shelves. Even as a statue, it's a cool thing. It's a chrome polar bear for crying out loud. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. I can't remember the name of the truck this is off of. I know that they were made in Vancouver. I know that they were an industrial truck. Um, I can't remember the name offhand. Somebody watching will probably re remember and remind me and tell me. I'll, I'll look it up after the fact. This was hanging on his wall in his garage. And the reason I picked this up is that this is quite an old um, indigenous made uh, bag. And uh, it doesn't even have buttons or snaps. It's made in very much tra traditional style. His dad was a collector and had a lot of stuff going back many hundreds of years. Um, so when you look at a bag like this, it has a name, M.W. If you can read that, let me see if I can see it on camera. Mm, it's a little hard to read, but it looks like there's actually a whole bunch of stuff written on the inside of it. Maybe I can decipher what this bag was at some point or what it was used for, but um, really nice beadwork on here. Really lovely piece. And that's an early um, North American indigenous piece of, of which uh, I saw it on the wall and, oh, Hayes truck. Thank oh, yeah. you. Jim says it's a Hayes. Yeah. Yes, it, this is off of a Hayes truck. Thank you, Jim. Boy, that would have driven me crazy. I'm going to set this aside. Oh, Melanie got it too. Yeah. Sometimes you're in somebody's garage or shop and there's like actual beautiful historical artwork and items hanging around. And I went there and I was a little nervous I wouldn't find anything because all I was finding at first from early maps. This is an old map of the Edmonton area. I'm not sure the exact year of this, but I'm going to look at it later and see how much of the city was built up on here. But people in my area would buy that for an old map. Um, this is kind of cool. Greetings to their majesties. Um, if you go back in the archives of my channel, you'll see that at one point we had a 1939 Royal Tour car. 
Uh, I'll see if the, there's got to be a picture of it in here because uh, Buick was really proud that they were the provider of that vehicle. Yeah, there it is right there. My butt's been in that car. I've driven that car. <laughs> there's the, you know, the king and the queen in the back or whatever. And my butt's been in that seat. Isn't that something? So uh, pretty darn cool. Anyway, uh, they came through Canada trying to encourage people to join the war effort because um, Canada was um, not required to join World War II at that time. And with Britain going into it, they actually had to convince people that they should join. So that was basically a, um, uh, a political tour to help uh, rally the spirits of the colonies. Uh, but this is from that day, 1939. Oh, pretty neat piece of history. And I've got a little bit of a connection to that myself. We have a magazine, Frontline Magazine, 1940 to 41. It looks like a lot of pictures. The Battle of the Flames, buildings coming down. So this is, I don't know what the published date on this would be, but that's, uh, I mean, I don't know if that is, I doubt whether that's from 1940 or 41. No, 1942, it's from the, it's from during the war. Issued for the Ministry of Home Security by the Ministry of Information. The official story of the civil defense of Britain. That's kind of a cool thing. That guy has a fairly surprised look on his face there. Expo 67. Big, um, they do these expo events. So they haven't done one in Canada in a while. But Expo 67, worldwide sort of event. And that happened in um, Montreal. And it looks like this is the menu from uh, from when they were doing the expo. Let's see, what was on the menu that day? Dinner au revoir. Chilled grapefruit with maraschino cherry, consomme royale, roast young turkey, dressing in cranberry jelly, cauliflower au naturel. Oh, isn't that a, is that a fancy way of saying it's raw cauliflower? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the raw cauliflower, it's cauliflower au naturel. I'm sorry for those of you that are French watching this. That's a terrible Pepe Le Pew-esque accent that I regret saying. <laughs> uh, but that's expensive. Look, 17 bucks for a bottle of wine back then. I'm sure um, a Motan Cadet 1962 is a lot more than $17 now. But uh, the dinner on the Empress of England, May 1st, 1967. So the Empress of England, that must have been a Canadian Pacific steamer. Yeah, so this is off of a, uh, like a steamship that must have been uh, taking people to Expo 67. Oh, look, at it. it looks like they were headed into town to do a lecture, because look on the back. Good luck and best wishes for the lecture. Phyllis, best wishes. So this was obviously somebody who was scholarly was making this trip and had the, uh, had the menu with them and had their friends sign it. I wonder if any of these people, uh, people from Scotland, I wonder if any of them uh, ended up going on to do really interesting things. So that's kind of cool. Canadian Pacific Expo 67 menu. That was also um, Canada's centennial year. Ray's Parkland gas and oil phone 37. You know, you don't have a lot of people living in Benalto, Alberta when there's only 37 phone numbers. Oh, that's an awesome picture. Look how happy they are. That's, is that going to be, that's going to be me. Oh wait, is he coming with a tire iron? <laughs> He's like, I've had enough of your racket. <laughs> I was bringing you the Bible, but I've changed my mind. I've heard Grandma singing. <laughs> wow. Well, it was a really cute image until I saw the old guy walking up behind them with a tire iron. <laughs> anyway. And a book. I, I told you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Grandpa, Grant, now, Grandpa doesn't like it when I play the guitar. <laughs> okay. Oh I'm sure it's a sweet gosh. image, but why did they give the old guy a tire iron in the background? <laughs> anyway, okay. Let's put that aside for now. Oh That's enough goodness. to make me laugh. <laughs> It's true, though. Why does he have a tire iron? They're all playing and having a good time. They could have left it there. And they're like, you know what? This picture just needs an old guy creeping up behind them with a book and a tire iron. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, that's My goodness. Right. Dodd's Almanac. Useful information for family and home. Oh, this must be like a... Uh, oh, good news. If your house catches fire, what to do. And uh, hard to do her usual work. Notice improvement after using Dodds. Then she used Dodds kidney pills. Look, life seemed to burden Betty. Why, Betty, not ready yet. It's almost 2.30. You go on, Anne. I never seem to keep up with my work recently. I feel so all in. Have you thought it might be your kidneys? Why not, what are you, a doctor? 
Wow. <laughs> is Betty's friend a doctor? Have you thought it might be your kidneys? Why not try Dodd's kidney pills? Maybe you're right, Anne. And then they tried, the, you know what? These kidney pills did the trick, my goodness. You know when friends just give you unsolicited medical advice? I've, I'm a little bit tired, huh? Have you tried removing your left foot? That might help you. You're right, I'm much more alert now that my foot's missing. They said it's not a tire iron, it looks like a cane. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure it looks like a tire iron. Hang on, we're gonna go back to this now. Maybe it's a cane, but I'm telling you, that's too big of a crook. <laughs> to me, that looks like a tire iron. <laughs> Either way, he's not using it to walk oh with. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, okay. We have, now he said his dad was a bridge builder. He built bridges. And here we have the original blueprints for the Saskatchewan River Bridge at Rocky Mountain House. Look, if I wanted to know how to dismantle this bridge, oh boy, nothing better happen to that bridge now or else I get myself in trouble. It looks like a train bridge, actually. Kind of from the design of it, it's your typical sort of bridge. I like that the the official drawings are just some guy with his pen drew it in there. But this all looks like they, they've got working measurements and stuff, but that's cool. So I've got blueprints for the that bridge at Rocky Mountain House. I've got blueprints for the, the Medicine River Bridge at Leedale. Uh, oh, Fraser says, when I was young living in Montreal, I'd go down to the docks to see the Empress ships. Oh, interesting. It smells like old cabin in here. Alberta <laughs> International Air Show, Red Deer Municipal Airport. I wonder if that's before Rudolph. They've got like a flying deer. deer. Yeah, that looks like the Ghostbusters car. So this has got to be from 1962 or so, if that would have been like a, a common thing then. The air show, look, and they're flying around. And uh, you, World War II planes were really commonplace after the war. Like they were cheap. They would give them away. There's people that used uh, old bomber planes like that. And uh, they use them for pig barns in our area. I don't know, I'm sure in other areas too, but they were just cheap and people would be like, yeah, I guess I'll buy that thing and use it for a pig barn. Statement of sale of a used car. Is the seller a dealer? No. And what were they selling? Uh, they were selling a Ford Model A truck, a 1928 Ford Model A truck. There's a serial number and license and everything, the tire size. Um, but they were really worried about, uh, look, the face were war, war smooth once vulcanized. So they're saying that the tires are not in great shape, I guess. So what did they get for their trade-in? They got 135 bucks for their 1928 truck. And where did, where did it go? Um, 1945. Well, this is possibly during the war. 135 bucks. Wartime prices. Interesting. Well, that's not a whole lot of money for a for a Model A, but maybe at that time it was probably a fair price, I guess. Roadmap, and it's from a Redhead gas station. This is actually more of a rare one. Um, some service station stuff is a little bit more collectible than others. In our area, Redhead, um, Buffalo, William Penn, those sort of station names are a little more obscure. Um, so this is a fairly collectible map. That's probably like a good $40 map. Right there, just that little piece of paper. And here is a uh, Coleman service bond. So if you have an old Coleman uh, lamp or something, this would be a nice little uh, accessory to go along with it, or a Coleman blowtorch, I guess, in this case. Can that... you show what this is, Abby? No, I'm gonna show that last. Oh. <laughs> well, I see it in front of me, calling to me. I This is super duper old. It's printed on vellum. Um, this is like, probably from the 1800s or before, but, do you want me to hold the camera or this? Um, do you want to hold the camera? Sure. Just make sure oh, not to sorry. put your fingers Wait, in front My of hands it. are already in front. <laughs> Wait, I feel like I'm Wait, sure, it's funny. I almost said funny. It's hard to read on this phone. The best uh, summer of my life was going to Expo 67 every day and night. Oh, that must have been fun. Okay, so this is from the 25th day of March in the year of our Lord, 1825. So 1825. Between... John Belmont Shepherd Street uh, in the parish of Saint and Thomas Reed. Hmm. Oh, Middlesex and the builder of one part and Thomas. So it must be a, a contract to, to build. Look at the size of the contract. This is like size of a bed sheet. <laughs> gonna... Look at the size of this thing. I mean, they have very nice writing. 
So I'll have to read more what this is, but it looks like, hang on, I can take the uh, camera back for okay. this part. It looks like this document must have been for uh, money in the United Kingdom of Great Britain, uh, executors, demise, lease, and those presents. And I feel like this is a north side of Crawford Street. Yeah, so this is probably like a, um, a deed uh, or a transfer of ownership of uh, uh, title for probably land. So that's quite the uh, purchase agreement. I wonder who owns that land now, wherever this is. Maybe I can look this up and, and see what it was. I wonder if the lawyer had to have writing like that, if he had calligraphy. He was like, one minute while we signed this contract and then he had to hand write the whole thing. You'd be at the office for days while the guy did this. He's like, no, 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 one moment please. And then you gotta write, he's gonna write out a whole contract like that. We take for granted some of our technology, but I definitely don't take for granted that cool and awesome writing. Look at how beautiful that is. A message or remnant and premises uh, being number nine, Crawford Street, Portman Square. Number nine, Cro oh yeah, there is 1825. For years wanting in days 70. So they assigned it like a 70 year lease or something from 1825 to 1895. And they're talking about the rent and stuff. So I don't know. That's cool. I'm going to have to investigate that a little further. But that's a pretty old piece of paper right there. Okay. Let's go into the box. Box number one. Hopefully you guys are having fun while we go through this. It might be a lease agreement, Jeannie says. That looks like a military. Or actually, that's a sailor's knife. This is usually for... Um, uh, working with rope, this sort of spike right there. I can't remember the exact name of it, but I know that's for pulling knots on rope, separating rope, etc. cetera. Uh, some, a lot of, uh, if you find a knife that has these sort of bits on it, it's made of wood. Um, those are actually meant for sailors because they would, um, if they fell off the boat, they'd float around on the top and you could retrieve your knife. A heavy one like that would sink right to the bottom. Uh, that's a cigar holder. That's like a red sort of, um, maybe, I don't know, if, I don't think it's Catalan, but it's a very early plastic. a form of Bakelite or something, but that's a cigar holder. A couple old razors in here, which people always buy razors. Uh, I always pick them up like this because somebody, you can shave with them. Clean the heck out of this thing and put it in the case and somebody will buy that. And shave with it. I shave with an antique razor myself. Bandmaster Chromatic. Oh, these are nice harmonicas. Actually, the chromatics are good because, hang on, it does this. Well, if you didn't catch the play before. It tastes a little off. Oh, come on. I think it blew girl. back in the wind. I wasn't anticipating all the years of dust to blow back into my mouth. <laughs> oh my anyway, that's a chromatic. I'm already, I'm, I'm knee deep in the sewage now. You have this little button that you push and it changes the um, uh, the pitch. It's pretty cool, actually. It's uh, Out of all of the harmonicas, that's probably a good one. I'm going to flip this back around. <laughs> this is how you build up. Uh, I'm like, it's. I'm trying to build up my immunity by... I hope they don't <laughs> have like a used toothbrush in there. Oh, this is kind of <laughs> neat. Okay, Melissa, yep. I need your help for this one. Can you unscrew the end on that? Why, yes, I can. And then what's inside? another one and then unscrew the little one, one more this time. is like exactly the type of screwdriver i need yeah but it's only flathead That's but fine. you know why and it's got the tiny one there too does it have more no no i don't think so it's three. oh wait it's still but going what? is it still going what whoa that's blowing my mind so four screwdrivers in one wait it's still going no it's not <laughs> it's like the uh ukrainian nesting doll of screwdrivers but they're but, pretty solid like they're... oh it's very solid and you know what they only really had the one type of screw head back in the day. There wasn't really a lot of variety. This is what you had. You had a flathead screw and that was pretty much it. Um, this is a little creepy. That's a um, snake head belt buckle. You know what? The, the creepier stuff seems to sell. It's actually, um, that's a venomous snake. That's like, I think that's a rattlesnake head. It looks evil just looking at it. Nope. Well, I mean, it probably wasn't happy with whatever happened to it. No, it was not expecting to land in a, on a belt buckle. I can imagine... <laughs> Hello, ladies. 
<laughs> I don't even I don't even want to finish that sentence. <laughs> uh, the guy that wears the uh rattlesnake belt buckle. <laughs> okay, anyway, that'll be up for sale. Um vintage tobacco um belt buckle. These Mexican made uh, belt buckles are oftentimes actually silver. Alpaca, Mexico. A lot of this stuff is actually um, silver. That's a, that would be a fair bit of silver in any of these belt buckles. Crazy horse, handmade. To me, this feels and, and kind of has the look of silver. I don't know if they would have stamped these or not, but. Hmm. Arab drilling and workover. Now, he was saying, and we put some stuff in the box when I was there, he was saying that this belt buckle, they only made five of in the whole world. And when he was working in the oil industry, the guy, the old guy that had this, took it off of his belt and gave it to him. And he said, it's solid silver and it had gold plating, I guess. And he said, there's only five of these that we made for the whole world. So if you're a belt buckle collector, maybe that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, Woody Two Shoes said the alpaca is silver plated. Silver plated? Oh, it's still cool. Um, these are kind of neat. These are Mac um, truck pens. So it's a pen and mechanical pencil set. It's kind of neat on its own, but this has the Mac Bulldogs, right? See, it says Mac right there. It's got the Mac Bulldogs on it. So for, if you're into Mac trucks or into advertising stuff, or if you're into pens, this is a great crossover piece where it's got uh, lots of crossover potential. And it's nice that it's got the original box. Anytime I see a pen like that, oh, I know what this is. You know what this is, right, Melissa? No? It looks like a... It's straight right here. Oh, that's not what I thought it was going to be. And it's not nicked. Oftentimes you find these things, and I don't know what happens to them, but they get chipped. Maybe they get dropped in the bathroom. People's hands are wet and soapy. But if the blade gets chipped and damaged, it's pretty well done for. There are people who will grind it back farther and sharpen it and make it work again. I don't know if you can weld and then re-grind it. Probably. Um, the brand name is often right there. I'm being careful. Look how I'm just putting my finger right in between where the blade closes. Uh, Klaus, Fremont, USA. That's a good shape though. And it's got the box, so that's a nice piece. Put that back into its little container. And the most impressive thing I haven't showed you guys yet, that's yet to come. These are pocket watch fobs. So these would have been um, given out by dealers uh, and you would put this uh, attach it to your pocket watch. Back when people wore pocket watches. It has a, I don't, she's got the safety hat on, but I don't think she's prepared for the work site. Be like, <laughs> I'm the girl from IT, industrial tractor division, Alice Chalmers. Some Marco Contractors Limited. So these are advertising Zippos from construction companies or uh, industrial companies. There's a big pin back button. R Angus Limited. Cat D10. And in the lighter category, Zippos are kind of one of the more popular lighter. And if you find them with uh, advertising on them, like company lighters, or if you find one that's Pepsi, or find one that's, you know, got something on it, they're a little bit better. Iron Workers Union. Just lots of neat sort of promotional things. And some of these are a little bit newer. Huh. Guthrie, if that was Guthrie Drilling, that's my great uncle Paul's company. My great uncle Paul has, <coughs> I'm coughing now, but this is the dust. He had a Guthrie, I might keep that one aside. That might actually be related to my family in some way. We'll have to find out. Okay. So we're going to set this aside. You guys all hanging in there? Cindy said steel toed stilettos. Yeah, that'd do it. I even like the old uh, Cigarello box. That's pretty cool. Oh, may as well show you guys this while we're here. Las Vegas clock. Look at that. And uh, the hours are designated with different dye. See that, Melissa? Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good idea, actually. It's creative. Fun piece for a game room or something. Let's see what do we have down in here. A little red rose tea. I choo choo choose you. The cookbooks that you had on a recent video, did you put them in an auction? No, I think they're at the store still, actually. 
this person, Joshua, said they called and emailed you about them. Okay. Um, I'll try and get back to uh, Joshua about that. Imperial Oil Touring Service, roadmaps and information. Well, that's a neat little uh, little calendar card with a advertising for a service station on it. This is a penny set. Um, now, I've had many, many coins. I'm not a huge coin collector myself, but I do know that when you go back far enough into the 1920s, like these are, you start to get coins worth a little bit more. And it's the, I, there isn't a 1936 in here, but actually a 1936 Canadian penny with a little dot on the bottom can be worth a tremendous amount of money. Uh, I thought I had one once and I was all excited and I emailed my friend and I'm like, oh, and it wasn't that. It was a missed stamp, but it wasn't the valuable one. These are all nickels and they go back to the 1920s as well, 1923, 22, 24. So somebody started off a good collection. And then you notice what happened here when the war started kicking in. Um, 1942 and 43, Canada issued um, nickels that were not nickel. They were a Zamac sort of compound. Uh, and I think America had uh, nickels that were also not in their natural sort of state. They were a similar sort of thing. They had pennies that were um, sort of a silvery colored steel pennies during the war. So there might be a few good ones in there. Let's bring the box out. Oh, let's see if I can do it. But is my hand big enough? Oh, it's got some weight to it. Actually quite, the box itself is kind of cool. Yeah, I, I'm all about containers. I have a problem, so. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of awesome. I already know what I put I in was there. at somebody's house once and they said, oh, there's an old box over there if you're interested in it. It had like, in memoriam of such and such. I'm like, that's odd. And I opened it up. Oh, ashes. No. Yeah. And I was like, I think that you might want to keep this. And they're like, oh, that's Uncle Pete. It's always Uncle Pete. Uncle Pete. It's a cool box. Um, so inside we have. This looks like a sewing box. Like you could put pins in there. Oh, maybe. Well, no, but didn't he? Oh, maybe it's a sewing box. Well, huh? No, but. Is that what you would do with it? Yep. Melissa has plans to make it into a sewing box, apparently. But there's no levels. These are all little Canadian coin sets. Some of these are, okay, that one looks like it's silver. Yeah, it's marked as silver. So silver coin, British Columbia. I don't wanna really touch the top of it because I don't wanna get my finger out. That has toning to it, but that's a um, very close to solid silver coin. And we've got several of them by different years, but silver is silver, but check this out. I don't know if that's all silver or if that's just like US 50 cent pieces or what. Oh. oh wait, what's on the top? Oh, it's full of wooden nickels. It says don't take any wooden nickels and yet here we go. From Clink Drugs. Oh, it is a wooden nickel. I've never even heard of a wooden nickel. Oh yeah, it was a, you know actually that's why they have the marble on the old cash registers. So if somebody had a fake nickel, you could actually tap it on the marble and make sure it was real. This is all together. That's silver. That's silver. That's just a token. Looks like a token too, right? Red Deer International Folk Fest. Oh, yeah, that's light. Okay, hang on. Are these just tokens in here? I think it might be tokens. Yeah, Folk Fest. Okay, well, we got well, some, there's some, there's some that dollars. Bottom. Okay, that's a 65 Kennedy half piece. That would have silver in it. That's a really old 50 cent piece, 1920 or so. That would be actually quite a bit of silver. So we've got some silver. I thought it was going to be all tokens, to be honest with you. These really old, that's 1919, that, I don't know if I can focus on that. Can you guys see that? It's 1919, it's actually in reasonably good shape. So these are mostly dollar coins uh, that happen to have a few tokens sitting on the top. So actually, I thought this was gonna be all tokens and it's mostly um, silver dollars and, and 50 cent pieces. That's pretty good. There's another coin right there. Actually, even the tokens, uh, are pretty cool. Canada dollar from the 1975 Calgary Stampede. Postcards, as it says. But these look like they're advertising postcards. From Don Meyer Gardner and Company, Peora, Peoria, Illinois. Manufacturers of high grade flour. So I guess they gave these out as sort of a little advertising thing from their uh, advertising their flour for their store. And we've got more coins. 
tokens and a couple silver dollars. A fair bit of silver, that's pretty good. <laughs> very, very neat. And a pipe. Okay, well, that's a fair bit of stuff. Um, I'm going to, maybe what we'll do is we'll put the stuff back in the box. Actually, maybe I won't, because that's gonna be a bigger mess. I'm gonna move the box out of the way. Here I can. Let's just put the, we'll put the box back in there okay. for now. What I wanted to show you, this is the whole reason why I actually went out there was for this one piece. Now this is what I've been waiting to show you. Melissa is putting the coins back Quietly into the coin trying to. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> this is real life. This is what happens. Oh, uh, Brian Province says, uh, hey, from Peoria, Illinois. So uh, we've got some stuff from your hometown here. Aren't we just a universal channel? From Edmonton to Illinois and everything in between. This is what I think I dunked in my water, was that raggedy end of this. Actually. Do you want me to go ahead? Mm, I might get your help to unravel this. Okay. I don't wanna, we have to be very careful with it though because it's kind of fragile. You heard how careful of a person I am. <laughs> okay, let's just, there we Wait, go. Any guesses? Hmm, I know what it is. Yeah, I remembered once you. Okay, um, for this, do you want to uh, take the camera and sure. point it at? Because I'll need two hands for that. I... Okay, we got to get nice and close to it. I'm just going to set the uh, all of my loot back into my loot box here. This is the joy of going on a pick. You end up just finding all kinds of random stuff. Um, Watching us clean our table. This is this is what's <laughs> happening right now. Well, I need a little room to work. So, okay. Remind me to clean this uh, placemat. <laughs> um, so, do you have a good shot of this? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so what this is, it's a Japanese samurai short sword. And uh, I'm going to just take, it's a little loose um, in here. But that's the blade on it. And it's actually still really sharp. And I don't think it's been sharpened in a really long time. Um, I'm, I'll take the camera from you. So this blade, um, it's a super old piece. Now somebody has uh, done some really old repairs. They've wrapped some fabric tape around it and some of that stuff just simply needs to go because it, it doesn't really suit the piece. I, I'm sure that um, there's a reason why it was on there, but it, uh, I'm sure there's a better way that, that could be looked after. But what I notice about the handle, see the grip here? It has these sort of little figures. I don't know if they're for good luck or what they are. I'm gonna take this off because the handle actually does come off. But see, there's little figures kind of hiding in the handle. And what's neat about this one is, I'm glad the handle actually came off. You know why? Because look, I don't know if anybody out there can translate this for me, but that's the signature of the maker. That's the Japanese signature of the maker and likely the year that this was produced. This is um, going to be a very, very early, very old piece. And it's super cool that it has, that they took the time to sign it and uh, put it all together. It's gonna require a little bit of restoration. And I wouldn't do a full restoration on this. It would need more of a preservation. Um, but to find an actual little samurai blade is pretty darn cool. Um, so we're gonna have to try and get that translated. I'd be careful when I'm pushing that on because this, this blade edge is actually still incredibly sharp. Um, and it's not uh, not something you see every day, especially out in the middle of the wilderness in the prairies in Canada. You don't find a, I would say probably 1800s or earlier, Japanese short sword. Um, so there are, uh, it's a Tonto, I think is what this is called. Maybe some, one of you can correct me on that. I think that the short swords are called a Tonto blade. Did that come up in conversation yet? No, that's okay. what I saw. Um, but it does have its original sheath. Uh, and although somebody's put like this fabric, almost kind of like um, leathery kind of looking tape on here, maybe the, uh, the original wrapping is in not terrible condition. It looks like it's wood and then it was wrapped and, and varnished almost. Just a really, really neat piece of history. Um, Valerie Hamilton said I'll screenshot later and ask a friend. Okay, hang on. Tanto, somebody said. 
Tonto, Tanto. Okay. Uh, there you can see the top of my head. So we're yeah, back I now. My head. Oh, yeah. With me really looking hard, uh, I was concentrating. You witnessed. So I drove out to the um, country today with Jason to buy this stuff. I actually didn't know the other stuff was there, um, but uh, I did hear that he had this um, samurai blade. And when you hear somebody in the in the uh, in Canada has a samurai blade. You go check it out. I'm just reading some of the comments right now. Oh. Uh, they said that that repaired tape, the fabric tape, looks like it's from the 20s. Yeah, it could be. I mean, his dad picked it up sometime in the 30s, um, uh, and it was sold to him as being an antique then. No one put, uh, they wrote earlier too, that's an excellent what, e XP piece of this. Goro Neudu Masumuni. Masumun. Uh, Tato blade, somebody says. Uh, Jane says, short updates of the house and truck, please. Garage furnace installed. Time set for dropping off the truck for repairs. Kids are excited for the new room. Love and best wishes to all uh, from uh, Ulitik. I hope I said that right. Uh, and Jane, to answer your question, there's a video coming out tomorrow about the house. <laughs> so I'm not going to say anything about the house just yet. But I will say this. When you watch tomorrow's episode about the house... Something about our house, um, there was a mistake made and uh, the look of our house on the outside is forever going to have to be altered because of this mistake. Um, so watch tomorrow's video for that update. Um, it's not pink. <laughs> it's not pink. But anyway, there's, um, there was a little bit of a mishap there. So we'll, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, you'll have to watch tomorrow's video to see what happens there. But um, for today... The truck is not repaired yet. Uh, some of you saw that oh, I was yeah. driving the truck on the last video. No, I'm just driving the truck and I'm getting in and out on the passenger side. Um, Cause it's still drivable. It's, it's just drivable. A, it's just busted. <laughs> it doesn't look real pretty. Um, so what I actually had to do is I took the truck in for an estimate on repair and we booked it into the shop, but the shop and the insurance company said that they don't make the trim anymore, which understandably, they don't make all the trim that I need because it's a camper special. It has very specific trim on it. And um, they we, we took the trim in, the existing trim in, to see what it would cost to get it straightened. And they said it would be thousands of dollars to straighten the trim because of how dented and mangled it was. How much time it takes, yeah. Uh, and the truck was like kind of on the verge of maybe getting written off because the, now you can't get the trim and they can't repair it properly. And, and I said, no, I'm not going to give up. I, I'm not going to give up on the... Uh, uh, I'm not going to give up on it. Um, so I went and bought a parts truck. I stripped all the uh, trim I needed off of it. And then I resold the truck, basically got all my money back out of it. So, uh, and they'll reimburse me for the value of the trim. So I won't be out any money. And I ended up getting uh, the trim that I needed for the truck. It's going in Monday and hopefully I'll have it back after about a week or so. Uh, and hello to Bill, our good friend and um, our one and only uh, staff member. Bill is on joining us. Uh, I was trying to answer some other questions too. I saw a lot of people talking about what type of blade it, it was that I had. If there's people out there that uh, speak or, or read Japanese, maybe you're able to decipher what it said. Um, so hopefully you could have seen that. Actually, I'll hold it up. And for those of you that are um, really skilled at this, I don't know, I'll try and hold it Just very- Just make sure you don't accidentally just let it slide in your hand. Uh, yeah, I don't want it to fall towards you or no. I. No. Um, I don't know if you can read the writing on that, but anyway, somebody who is able to read that, I will try using um, maybe Google Translate and see if I can figure out what that says. But uh, I'm very curious to know, to de decipher the blade. I think it'll be really neat to find out its exact age. Um, my guess is somewhere in the 1800s. That's my guess. Um, we shall see. Maybe it was made by Tom Cruise because I saw a movie once where he was the last samurai. <laughs> Uh, so Dave says it's kanji. Okay, well we'll have to, we'll have to see. Um, Deborah McBride, thank you so much for the uh, super chat there. My thing went. Uh, hold on. Kim said that the box might have value. It might have had a tea set in it. Oh, maybe, maybe it was a fancy little tea set, something like that. I mean, it was full of silver when we got it, so that was pretty good. Um, Do a pencil thing to read the blade. Oh. Says Eileen. Yeah, I can, it's pretty legible even without a pencil writer. But then it's easier to carry around a piece of paper. Except than, at the bottom where it like wiggled around. Yeah, but... You can't really see that. Then you don't have to worry about cutting your fingers off. Just a slight paper cut. Right? Well, I could also just put the sheet back on too. I, I should probably do that. Anyway, it's a cool piece. 
Um, so guys, I am going to now spend the rest of my time cleaning up this giant mess I made on our table. <laughs> um, and there's a video coming out tomorrow. Oh, the other thing that's happening tomorrow, not just the video about the, um, what's happening yes. with our house. Uh, but we have an auction. It's not our auction. We have some items in an auction. We have about 75 pieces of jewelry that were on a video that we featured. And a lot of you were asking when that auction sale was happening. So that's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it's not all our stuff. Did you say that already? It's not all our stuff. No, just some of the jewelry is. Um, but if you were interested in seeing what it is and what's going on, it's kauctions.ca. It's a Sunday sale. And I don't know the exact lot numbers that our stuff is, but so you there's can search a lot of people through. that were inquiring about a lot of those pieces of jewelry and they're in that sale. Yeah. So the, the, the mention is for those people that were inquiring and interested in it. So, yeah. um, so guys, thank you very much for, um, for watching today's episode. Hanging out with us. And if you did, um, if you, if you were interested in, um, seeing if you could decipher what this little samurai sword is I have, um, leave your comments in the comment section and I'd be curious to know, uh, maybe we have a samurai expert out there. What about the dresses from that, uh, that <coughs> box that we opened? Oh, they're at the store. I still have the dresses. Yeah. I should, I should, uh, put them on a mannequin and automate them in home alone the store night. So it looks like people are dancing in there. <laughs> We can't break into this joint. I thought you said they're out of town. They're supposed to be in Paris. And yeah, I'm gonna home alone the mannequin. You know what's gonna happen? He'll forget, and then he'll go and open up the store, or Bill will open up the store, and it'll scare the bejeepers out of them. Security alarm goes off. The police go by, like they they patrol and everything, and they'd be like looking in the store. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's live feed unboxing and our little chat. Um, stay tuned for more videos, guys. And as always, thank you very much for watching our channel, um, for subscribing and for being involved. Uh, Bill says we have dresses. Yes, Bill, on the in the back <laughs> part of the store, by the back door, hanging on the side of the bookcase back there are some 1930s era dresses. So yes, we do have dresses. One of them has a matching set of shoes too. Oh yeah, that's right. And I've not heard back about the Volkswagen van yet, if uh, anybody was curious about that. I'm curious about that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, I might have to phone them tomorrow and see if, if they have an update for me, because that would be, that would, of all the things that would make me happy, that would make me happy. We could park them next to each other. Yes, we could. Yeah. So cute. It would be very cute. <laughs> Melissa likes the split window Volkswagen van. She thinks they're cutesy. I think it would be fun to restore the other. Did you show the other one yet? Kind of. But they know what it is. Yeah. I think it would be great for one the other one is restored that we could actually go camping in it like alexander and i and then the other one because i mean it's awesome <laughs> oh somebody said that the um uh oh so one person said uh let's see that sword goes back to the 1600s or earlier well that would be nice um and then this black shiny wrapping on here is eel skin i think they said oh i saw that earlier uh, yeah. really quick i don't know if dave is still on but i meant saw somebody else mentioned it is it typical for you to just buy things sight unseen? Like say for this box, you didn't buy this completely sight unseen. No, this box, I kind of just, I saw there was things, sometimes if I feel like it's good, we'll just put things in a box and I'll say, okay, how much for the box? Or um, uh, in this case, I knew that I went there for this particular blade. But if somebody comes in the store, uh, and when I do those unboxing videos where it's sort of like a mystery box, I kind of can see what's on the top and they say, do you want to look through? And if I see like a cool old hot wheel or something, I'll be like, no, I'm good. I'm like, depend if the price is okay, I'll take a risk on it. Um, and then it makes for a good video. It makes too. for an interesting video. And it's fun bringing you guys along to be able to discover it with us. But, um, but they said, how do you explain like for the Potter's house, that was a little bit sight unseen, but even with that, well, you looked around and you did see some things that you thought would make it worth it, but we had no clue how yeah. big of a, Job well, that was going to be, and the biggest like Betty Jones' house and Mary's house both looked um, really, really full and cluttered, and maybe that there wasn't too much promise. But knowing that people sometimes hide things or sometimes there's stuff hidden, frankly, Mary's house I bought because I thought that there was enough good antiques probably in there that it'd be cheaper for me just to buy everything than to have to buy stuff separately. Mm -hmm. For Betty Jones' house. I just thought it'd make a really cool video series to empty out the house, even if it was just garbage. And so I wasn't expecting there to be anything. And that ended up being our biggest win ever. Yeah. That house. That also is what 
boosted the YouTube for us as well, like meeting yeah. a lot of you <laughs> came from that. So yeah, it was pretty we're crazy. Extremely fortunate, and the people that we met along the way and were able to work with. Yeah, it's it's been a. Uh... No, somebody said four to ten thousand dollars for a katana. I, well, this I don't think is a katana. Katanas are quite a bit bigger, but it's a cool piece either way. Um, but guys, thank you so much for watching. I have cleanup to do because, like I said, I made a mess. <laughs> um, but we'll see you all uh, tomorrow if you're on the channel, and uh, you can check out our video that posts tomorrow and the auction that's going on. And uh, we'll see you guys very soon. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you for now. <laughs> Bye, guys. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Bye, everybody.